Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Everyday Ecom Podcast. Today I am joined with the top dog himself, Mr. Tomer. How's it going, man? Very good. How are you? Good. Doing well. Where are you calling out of today? I am in Israel. Israel. Amazing. There's a big community of sellers there and uh seems like it's ever growing. Do, do you guys ever do um meetups and uh events there? Yeah. Yeah, we have a few of those, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, I'd love to start this and uh, kind of get your background story. Um, so wh who is Tomer? How did you get involved in uh, in this e-com world? Sure. So um, I started selling on Amazon uh, in 2015. We did a course uh, on how to sell Amazon before that. That's how I got started. Invested all of my money basically in the first inventory and then kept reinvesting in, uh, in the follow-up inventory. So um, fast forward to today, I have uh, multiple brands that I manage with a small team in the Philippines. And I, consult, I consulted over uh, probably over a thousand sellers by now, uh, mostly seven, eight figure sellers. And also been working with some of the aggregators in the space for the past uh, two years now. And I also have my own event called Top Dog Summit that I've done four times uh, now. And um, yeah, I've been speaking all over the place. Uh, for the past few years as well just enjoy helping uh sellers out and i know you also have a copy of my new book uh, right the amazon wave so that's uh my uh yeah newest thing i guess uh for the past uh it was launched two months ago amazing um what like do you see your transition um or, or focus more into building brands for yourself or do you see the opportunity because you have a skill set I think a lot of e-commerce uh, people that have been in it for such a long time have this unique skill set that it's more focused towards helping other brands out or, um, you know, kind of leveraging what you have and going deep into your own private label brands. So I guess it's a bit of both right now. We have a, a big plan for launching a new brand, actually, that will be like a I call it like a real brand, not just like Amazon, like uh, outside of Amazon as well. But then at the same time, I also started to partner up with some of the sellers I consulted for, for a few years. And then the idea is to take a bit of equity from their exit and help them scale towards an exit. So that's something I've been doing for the past few months. And we already see amazing results from everyone in that program. So I only took sellers on that have worked with me in the past that I know them, they know me, we trust each other, and then I can offer them to basically partner up on their business. I like that. W would you say there is a overarching um, mission or, or vision for um, well, for your company? Like, uh, I know outside of money and, and getting companies to certain valuation, getting equity, that's all uh, amazing stuff. But do you, do you see a bigger vision for um, yourself in e-commerce and, and what you guys are doing with the team? Yeah, so great question. I think for me, like Top Dog, if you ask me, like Top Dog, the company I, I built was all about uh, let's bring the best of the best in the industry into it. And it was never about, if you look at any other name in the industry, it has like AMZ or Seller or whatever name in it. And I tried to come up with like a different name than everything else out there. And also to have it a bit broader. So to me, um, Top Dog is not just about uh, Amazon. It's more about even entrepreneurship, I will say. So um, and now I'm even trying to bring in like other entrepreneurs into it. And then the brand we are going to build that I mentioned is going to be with the Top Dog name connected to it. And that brand is going to launch products for entrepreneurs, like digital entrepreneurs. And we're going to launch e-commerce, like physical products to that brand starting with Amazon sellers, but then like as customers, right? But then it can go much, much bigger than that. Awesome. So it sounds like with Top Dog, it's more of like building this high level, high performance community of sellers, primarily e-commerce, but also going into a little broader entrepreneur, digital marketing. Um, yeah, that, that will happen later. And the lead for that is gonna be the physical products that we're gonna launch. So I know there are like in, in, our, in, in our industry, in the Amazon space, there have been a lot of case studies, right? Like different people launching different products to say, hey, here's a case study of this random product I launched on Amazon. Software companies did that. Some 
Um, experts did that as well. But to me, like this new project is not going to be a case study. It's actually me standing behind it and like the products I want to sell under the top dog name. Hmm, I see. Do you think, I think we know the answer to this, but just um, I, I get this question a lot of masterminds, community, networking. Do you think you would have been where you are today without that group that you guys can constantly go to share ideas, share strategies, what's working, what's not working? No, I think, I think it's like anything. I think people don't, uh, I think that like a lot of experts are not respected or like a lot of courses are not respected um, for like obvious reasons, right? There are a lot of like fake uh, content out there to put out like uh, uh, even the misleading content as well. So I think like I get where it's coming from, but if you want to kind of shortcut your way to success is just uh, hang out with much bigger uh, and with more experienced sales than you are. So that's what I try to do from the very beginning. I know I, I mentioned it in the book that you have a bunch of times, but I think I, I spent like six figures on networking, right? And going to events and masterminds and whatnot, like <clears throat> before I could actually afford it, that was, I started like a year after I started going in, into like um, expensive events and stuff in 2016. So um, and because I couldn't find what I wanted, that was one of the reasons I formed Top Dog Summit and kind of do the event I wanted to go for, where all of the attendees, all of the speakers are just sellers. We don't have any sponsors or any service providers that are welcome to come to the event. So everyone who is speaking is either seven, eight, nine figure sellers, and everyone who is attending is at least seven figure sellers. So um, that's how we kept it like at a very small, intimate event, like 50 to 80 people. Um, and the level was always very high. And even the profit from the event is not that great. Like to me, the bottom line for it is not that great, but I make a lot of money from uh, the ideas I get from the event, from the speakers, from the people. And that's what I say when I consult sellers, I just get something from everyone when I give someone advice, right? Because they share something I didn't think about before. Mm -hmm. Now I know you guys have done a uh, summit in the past um, and there's no concrete date <laughs> um, for next year. But can you share some um, uh, ideas or when, uh, if you guys will do a 23 summit, what is to be expected, um, even on price point, who can attend, how sure. they can find out more info on that? Yeah, so we're going to update that on the topdogsummit.com uh, website. That's going to be on there. But we are probably looking at, uh, we did the last one in May this year. So we're probably looking around those that like, let's say between March until June or something, probably next year. And it's gonna be either in Israel or in Europe somewhere. So we honestly don't know yet because of uh, COVID and everything, like it's still very messy all over the place. So, uh, and we also change the location every year. We never do the same thing twice. We never have the same lineup twice. So it's always, always uh, changing. We actually have, because it's only sellers, we actually have speakers coming back the year after as attendees paying full price. And the price for the event, you asked about that as well. So the price is uh, $3,000 $3, to attend. That was the last year's price, uh, like this year's price, I will say. And then we have people that are community members. So people who I've worked with in the past that either came to one of the events or done other things, they usually get like a steep discount as well on the event. So um, that's like a rough idea of, of the numbers. The price doesn't include the hotel or transposition, but everything else is included. So you don't need to pay for any meals or drinks or anything. Like everything is kind of included in the event itself. Yeah. Um, I, this past three, four years, even before, um, have been heavy into networking and, and masterminds. I, I think we share the same group in, uh, uh, MDS. Um, and I've, I've heard a lot of very successful people, more successful than I, that have said the same thing, um, that you're kind of blind to your own decision-making processes until you get a dose of reality from people above you um, or that operate in a different reality, even in, in, in the same space, same platform as Amazon, but they see and operate in a different way. Um, so like, I can't attest to, uh, I can't attest enough to how important masterminding is. Um, and there is no value, there's no price that you can put on it. 
because yeah, I, and I, I think it comes to like, I think at the end of the book, I actually mentioned like different levels of um, content you can receive. So it starts with like courses and books and stuff like that are either free or very cheap YouTube channels, podcasts, stuff like that. Um, then you can go to like large events, right? Like Sell and Scale of Hawaii was just in like a few weeks ago. SellerCon is a good example. Prosper Show, like all those big events are, are okay for uh, content and networking and it's like very big and, and stuff. And then uh, after that, you usually go to like um, smaller events. So these can be like either an MDS event or my event or Billion Dollar Summit is a great event. So those smaller events are usually more expensive, uh, more exclusive, usually for like bigger sellers or more experienced sellers. And then like, I think the top level is a mastermind. So a mastermind, a real mastermind is between four to eight people uh, knowing every, everything about each other in terms of what they sell on Amazon or what they do. And hopefully similar level as well in terms of size of business, experience on Amazon, and also mindset is really important. And then if they are in different categories, that's even better. So I basically, what I've done over the past few years is I've taken a few sellers, put them together into a mastermind, and then consulted them for a, for a few months uh, process. Because even if you do have that small mastermind, a lot of times it will collapse over time. So uh, having a coach kind of um, facilitating that mastermind really helps and giving it context and then also giving obviously content and value to the group. So if you think about most courses, courses out there or any content is put out there, it's usually generic. Like this is how you launch a product, see how you find your product. But if I come in and I, I know what you're selling and you share that with the mastermind, then I tell you, what do you think about this product for your brand? Right. And you tell me, I don't want to do it. And then the rest of the mastermind says, Hey, we think it's a good idea. Like it, we all kind of help each other out. So uh, having a coach with a mastermind is very helpful. I think it's even better than a one-on-one -on -one thing because maybe I tell you one thing, you don't want to do it as a one-on-one -on -one consultation and then it's over. But if the rest of the mastermind think it's a good idea or, or someone comes up with a better idea than me, um, I think that's great. And that happens a lot. Yeah, exactly. And that, that goes to the fact of, again, we often have blinders and uh, limiting beliefs. It's, you, you get a dose of true reality when, when, when you're around other people that either, again, same level, similar size business or higher that can uh, kind of give you that punch in the face in a good way that, uh, that we need. Uh, I want to focus, or go, go to the book. Uh, I've, been, I've been going through it. I'm like 30% in. And uh, you have very high level things that you talk about that, again, a lot of uh, YouTube blogs, uh, forums don't mention. Uh, for whatever reason, but you mentioned a six star experience or, or, or formula. And I like how you're phrasing that because we're again, often thinking, okay, five star is the cap. We need a five star review. So already we're at this mindset of five is the highest. So when we aim for five, we often get four, three, two, because it's like, okay, this is the highest. What is that six star delivery? And uh, why, is, why is that important for every seller to aim for that? Yeah, so the review system is broken, right? Because it's only one through five. Anything that isn't five as a review hurts us. Even a four-star review hurts us and gets down closer to four stars. So if we look at the new reviews that we get, if it's not five, we're not happy, right? It doesn't satisfy us. So because of that, we need to aim higher. Um, so if you think about any, the, I don't know if you ever left a review for anything, probably not, right? Like most of us probably never left a review on anything because we didn't get an outstanding, um, experience from that product, especially like physical products in a restaurant. It's, I think, easier to get like an outstanding experience than an actual like physical product that you buy, especially on Amazon. So to do that, uh, I believe that you need to do, you can do a number of things. You can do all of them. You can do some of them, but Basically, you need to, like the first five stars, I covered that in the book, but the first five stars are basically getting everything right. Like the product has to work, you need to have good customer support. Um, you need to have clear instructions on how to install and then use your product and so on, right? You need to have everything right. And only then you can really focus on the six star, which is like over deliver and surprise. So what I mean by that is that that can really be anything. That can be a unique packaging or when they open the packaging, they have a small message inside on the inside flap or uh, you add a small gift inside of the packaging they didn't expect or a nice insert card telling the story of the company in a playful way. One of the things that we have in our baby brand is when you 
on the insert, we have on one side, we might have like a warranty or something like that. Um, but then on the main side, like when you open up the packaging, it will be a message from your, uh, that is written in a kid's font. And it's like from your baby to like dear mom and dad. And it's like very playful, very funny, uh, very cute. And say you could buy anything for yourself, but you decide to buy this for me instead, right? And then like uh, flip me over and then they see the warranty on the other side and they opt in. So, I mean, we do those type of things. And then even if something is wrong with the product, right? Let's say it doesn't work as it should or a piece is missing. We get a lot of people just emailing us before leaving a negative review or before they place a refund because they feel as if they got more than they paid for because they just got something, they got value. They didn't expect that value can be a smile on their face. That value can be something they didn't expect inside. It doesn't have to cost you like a lot more money or anything like that. So I give a lot of, I think I give a lot of examples in the book um, on how to do that on different aspects uh, throughout the experience. And the way to kind of break it down for everyone listening is to think about um, when they get your product, like as soon as they get the packaging and then they open it and they use it and they store it, like every single touch point the customer has touching your product or the packaging is, a, is a, an opportunity to create an experience for them. I like that. Um, kind of going to maybe someone that has recently started or is at the six figure level, um, inching closer to seven figures. Um, you know, they have the fundamentals down. They know how to do product research, how to source efficiently, how to launch, but maybe they're stuck at the next level um, tactics, whether that's PPC, external traffic, um, going, doing that customer experience on, on every touch point, whatever that might be. What are the three to five things for 2022 that you would say every Amazon seller that is serious with this and, and at the seven figure mark or getting to that seven figure mark has to have in their business? Again, assuming all the uh, fundamentals are set and done, what are yeah. some of those main things? Yeah, so I know you're only a third into the book, but that's the last third of the book. Like it's exactly that because the entire first part of the book is foundation. So it's everything from product research until product launch. That's like maybe half of the book. Then the third quarter of the book is like PPC supply chain KPIs, which is like how to run your business once you have a few, pro a few products. But then the last quarter of the book, like a big chunk of the book is, okay, so you know how to launch products, you understand Amazon, but how do you run it as a business? How do you have a team and systems and processes in place to support your growth? Because if all you know how to do is look for a product, source it, launch it, run PPC and supply chain, you're gonna burn out. Like you're just gonna keep launching more and more products. It's, it's not sustainable. And that's not why you started selling on Amazon, right? Uh, maybe some people start now because they think of an exit, but who says you will ever exit your business? So it's better to build a self-sustained business model where it can kind of sustain it itself and live on its own with a very small team managing the whole thing for you or almost entirely without you. And then you can kind of step away from it and then do other things like consulting, write a book, whatever you want to do, right? Um, but anyway, I talk about like different company structures that I've seen in the book. And I talk about the autopilot uh, system that I created for myself with a very small team. So I think it, it comes down to what it is that you want and what lifestyle you want to have while running your business. So. Uh, let's say you are working 10 hours, 20, like, I don't know, 12, 14 hours a day, every single day by yourself on your six or seven figure business. When do you want to stop doing that? When do you want to take a week or two off of your business? Uh, and if you don't know, uh, you need to start thinking about those things. And then when do you want to get there and how are you going to do that? Right. With like, that can even happen with one or two people on your team. It doesn't need to be like a huge team, but those are questions you need to ask yourself every single day. So when I talk to sellers and I do a lot of consulting for sellers, like at the seven, eight figure mark is there are only two things I care about. I'm like, what can we do now that you will double, triple your business in the next few months? And what can we do now to free up your time? So you have a lot more time to work on things that are important for you or to spend your life on things that are, that matter for you, uh, like two, three more times, you know, like free up your time. So those are the questions I think entrepreneurs need to ask themselves every single day. Yeah, I love that. I think that's like the best summary on why we start this business, how we operate it, how, how we can get other people involved, like 
if we're the bottleneck of the business, then it's doomed to fail because there's way too much that goes into it that um, one person can make decisions for. It's a team um, and very small team and processes and systems. I, I know that from experience and <clears throat> again, listening to uh, other people that have done that, but I want to get your take and hopefully I finish the book uh, sooner and kind of get those gleanings. Um, switching gears, um, what would you say is your superpower in e-commerce? I think I have a good idea, but I want to hear it from you and um, what you would say is like your magic power. Yeah, so I, I think, uh, so before I did any of this stuff, I was a full-time magician before I did like Amazon and I learned everything. I was like a self-taught magician. I, I live in like a small place like in Israel, like uh, so I didn't have any magicians around me to learn from or any anywhere I could go to to learn this stuff. So I basically learned from books and I learned from uh, video like video cassettes back then and then like uh, DVDs and whatever. So to me, it was like uh, and even like I'm uh, especially good with like card magic. So in cards, I was like the number one guy in Israel when I was 20 years old. I was on like an Israel TV show because of it. So with cards, I'm even left-handed. So all the books are written for like right-handed people. And then I write with my right hand and I'm left hand with cards, which is very strange. But anyway, the point is I was self-taught. And I think whenever you are really, whoever is really good at learning things is also naturally a good teacher and is naturally good at simplifying things. So I think my superpower is simplifying things uh, very well. And that's what I've, I think I've done in the book. Uh, even before the book, I did like an Amazon simplified course, I called it. I only let like 100 people in, sold for 500 bucks just to kind of finish my book. That was the entire goal of doing that course, like a 10-week course. So that's exactly uh, that's exactly it. And then I, the people I hired to support me in my journey is people that are a blank slate because I could just teach them everything. And when I tried hiring people with experience, I taught them my way of doing things and they always fell back to the old ways of doing things. So that's what worked for me. But people who are not naturally good at uh, that stuff, like at uh, learning things or teaching things and whatever, they should definitely hire someone like that. It is very analytic, systematic, um, and very good at like processes. Yeah, I like that. I think that can apply to not just Amazon sellers, e-com, but everyone in entrepreneurship. And I, I think I was listening to Alex Sermosi mention, it, it takes 20 hours to learn a new skill, but some people will delay it for years and years, again, from whatever mindset we might have. Of, I don't know this. I need to hire someone. I'm, this, is a, this is below me. Um, but just getting in and, and teaching yourself um, something new is... is like imperative of the entrepreneur so that's i didn't know yeah, that's like the 80 percent right to what uh, alex is a very smart guy so i mean the first 20 hours that you invest in something is where you get probably maybe 50 or even to the 80 percent mark of what you need to know about that topic yeah exactly and i didn't know you're a magician i want to uh is there any clips on youtube i can check you out uh maybe maybe if without my name if you have magic maybe we'll find something yeah but uh, I did a few things on my, like, I post a few stuff on my Facebook from time to time. Uh, but yeah, nice. I'm going to, I'm going to research that after this. Um, well, this is, this has been amazing and very succinct, um, uh, concise manner. So I appreciate this. Um, how can, how can people connect with you if they have questions either on the summit um, agency to work with you or just generic uh, things about e -com? Yeah, so first of all, so like if you feel like you're stuck, if you're stuck at the six, low, uh, or mid seven-figure mark and you try to scale, especially towards an exit, if that's what you want to do, then I'm. that's exactly what I've been doing for, for a few years now. So I'm the guy to talk to. I can either go to jointopdog.com or you can um, uh, find me on LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, I'm all over the place and just, um, yeah, message me anytime. I'm always happy to help, by the way. I've done... A lot of calls with sellers over the years, all for free. I learn from everyone I talk to. Always have to talk to more sellers, especially if you are like a bigger seller. Happy to kind of look at your brand, tell you what I think. I'm doing so many of those. I have an, one of those later today. So, I mean, I'm just really happy to help uh, sellers out. I think there is a lot of misinformation out there. And I think sellers, if you think about it, they are really 
stuck in their own mind, like if in their own business. So you don't have anyone looking at your business. You don't want to share what you sell. I get it. But if you, let's say, hire a PPC consultant, they only look at PPC. You hire, um, I don't know, a copywriter, they look at your copy. You hire whatever, right? People are just looking like at the flat surface of your business, but no one is really looking closer on what you're doing. So they're not seeing a holistic view of your brand, which products you need to launch next. Are you utilizing all the variations you can? Are you really uh, making all the efforts you can in your PPC? Are you really optimized for a supply chain? So there are so many things you can optimize for that you don't really think about. And trust me, the buyers on the other end are doing that as soon as they buy you out. So um, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Well, I'll leave um, all those links in the description of the site, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, and if you guys have questions, feel free to reach out to Tomer. You've been more than generous and kind, so I appreciate your time. Uh, looking forward to connecting maybe sometime in the future. And hopefully, um, if the summit's going down, I'll get some info and uh, tr try, to, try to make my way there. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Bye.